to um, start up the Definity CMC CSI um, switch. Um, we're going to start this baby up and um, I've already um, booted this thing up. I um, had some trouble um, early on um, part of it so I don't think I gave it a chance for the thing to boot up um, in a timely fashion. Um, we're going to use this, uh, serial connector up here, are you, there you go, the one hanging. We're going to wire this baby up to, um, a Dell Optiplex up there, see, right there. And then we're going to wire that up, um, use via site administrator to um, program or uh, administer the system and, and we're going to oh, there we go. we're going to use a terminal session on um, the Windows laptop or I mean the Windows server on my Hackintosh. Um, now I'm going to plug in the PDX onto an OPS. Um, it wasn't plugged to an OPS before. It also gives Just powered up, as you can tell. I'm gonna open up, show you the front panel. I can get the front panel. And we can move the cable in here. I'm going to take this out of the tripod and uh, see it do its testing. But on this screen it should be doing tests. Got it on the right one. I should say turn. Should just give it a moment. And on the screen, it's gonna pop up some. There you go. Virtual memory task, cooking task, see timer task. Oops, sorry, screen went, went to sleep. So you can pass in the data. Flash checks, checks on. See any time of tests. And so you can get what I, I actually have this book that I'm running on the site about the System 75 um, history of the development of the system. So this kind of stuff gets mentioned. Um, Now, like I've said on the site um, and in the other video, a lot of this stuff, unless you work for Avaya's Colorado operation, if Colorado even exists anymore, um, this stuff would not be relevant. Although it's for, oh, did you hear the clip? It's a lot of relays in the system. Just to let you know, um, there, there are a lot of relays that click. Um, at various times, um, maybe to um, activate the LEDs 
and um, yep. So this is um well well like a few seconds and everything is all green for the most part. Um, there's some yellow LEDs. Those are minor alarms. Oh uh, no, it's not even an alarm. Okay, so that's good. Everything is clear at the moment. Some like some alarms might come up in um, an event of um the if the DC key stations don't register in a timely manner. So you might hear some clicking on the relays, trying to grab my attention. Um, see that? Alright, here we go. Um, put the camera as a follower. So I'm going to log in. It's going to ask me for the terminal type. I just say use the standard one that, um, the UTMT terminal just because, um, that's, that's the terminal that was designed to work on the system. Um, now, the function key is varying. That's one that I think I, from, what I've, from what I've been playing with does escape. F3 save settings. F5 is your help command. Um, you basically have up to about 25 various commands. So, um, you have add, um, get, um, enable, um, but typically you're going to use add, um, set, um, save, and change. Um, yeah, I extension that up is, it's not command line, it's, um, it's a terminal U, it's an old fashioned, it reminds me of the deck days. And it, you know, everything prints on the screen. I, you know, I um, can actually fill in forms. That's one of the, the things I like about a text UI, not like a Cisco iOS where I have to assemble the command the right way on me. You know, um, so I'm going to uh, change, and then I type in my extension. This is going to go for it. Really? of command, um, but typically, um, friction, and, um, show you my settings, um, oh, there's some alarms coming up here, these are false positives, because, uh, not everything's plugged in for phones, so, um, you can, I can, I can disregard those. Um, so, um, anyways, um, this is the change station command, and you'll notice this is not, um, if you were using the Cisco Call Manager Express or something with iOS, you don't have this kind of luxury. You have to type in each command independently and make sure you don't screw it up with the, um, Defining System 75, System 85, um, um, Communication Manager, or well, this is, this really hasn't changed, and this PBX architecture is over 30 years old, um, just, I, I find this the best, um, interface, the Nortel PBX, uh, good luck trying to figure out how they use that damn thing. 
Um, I had a security code on the operating unit on this is not a flight phone. Um, this is the E434 that you saw in the other room. And um, you got your button assignments. This is um, interesting. I thought I could have more than 10 call appearances if I so want them. I mean, that, that's, that's an overkill, but um. If I go over button 10, I have to go to bridged appearances. I thought I thought that was interesting. Um, um, the other thing is the Defending is really picky in terms of when you're when you programming buttons. Um, one of the things is you can't if a button does not work on the if, um, on a particular model because it's defined by page one of um, set type, right? So you have to make sure the feature buttons that you program on the buttons are going to be compatible with that telephone set or the PBX will bitch at you. Um, and the other thing too is Excuse me, um, the other thing that um, you need to ensure is when you're on the, um, the features do not overlap with the soft key and you press the menu button. If, if that happens, the PBX will again, the Tiffany will b bitch at you for, um, for, um, for having redundant, um, features. You can actually clear it. I've, I've tried, um, you know, saving it a few times, hit F3 a few times, and, um, that's how you can get it to work. I love how, um, yeah, down here, this phone should be working, um, I think it's, I think it's a wiring on this, yeah, um, yeah, anyhow, so I was going to talk about this wiring contraption that I have. Um, I'm using a 66 block to connect some of the phones in the other part of the house here. Um, then in some of the setups, I, I, have, to, I have this extra Cat5 um, patch panel. What I did was I took a bunch of Cat5 cable, patched um, one side here and then other side over here and then plug another um, six lines here and put it over here so it's like an X and Y panel it's kind of um, it gets like a loop back to just make it easier for areas that um, need an RJ45 or RJ45 type of setup I know it's, it's kind of weird um, Ideally, it's good for a test setup, so you can do um, testing. Um, they, um, it also separates DCP from IP and for kind of grandma stuff. Welcome to the heading. Um, it's not working at the moment, so I'm, I'm wondering what's causing this. Um, one of the things that I, uh, let's see. I've used cobblers. It could be, it could very well be a wiring problem. There we go. Oops. 
small ball. So that's how you, okay, so that's how I got that thing to work. It, it might be a wiring thing. Um, I'm going to try to get everything on the 66 block. Um, which will require me trying to do some wiring, especially doing just the two wire environment. Now that I don't have to worry about using you know, various pairs of copper. Um, oh, uh, why are you now on the 8434? Uh, the 8434, as I said um, in the past, it works in a two wire environment. Um, but for the screen to work properly, you need to um, use pins 7 and 8 to wire that, and you need to have a power adapter, power brick or um, power um, so um, in this setup what I did to make this easier was use an 8 wire plug and then just a 2 wire uh, um, I think this is a 4 wire but I um, made sure the pins used um, Oh, why, why are you not working? Yeah, so this is a, a four wire with the wires exposed to pins four and five. And then on the phone, I just made, excuse me, made sure I exposed, um, um, pin seven and eight. Um, that's, um, you know, there's, there, you can actually, in theory, not need to use, um, the full, uh, ink pin, pin wiring. You could take a, a four-wire phone plug and then make an RJ45 plug and do four and five for the, the tip and ring and then seven and eight for the power. Um, if you if you have patience to do that, um, I wouldn't. Um, but if, if if you have any wire like a Cat Five or a flat one like this one, then then just do that. But I got it up there with no problems, and it's working. And that's the most important part of that. And I'm told by Avaya in the documentation to keep these scenes closed because it might emit EMF. <laughs> I love those uh, health nuts. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Bye.